Hello there, dear friends. I'm here to share some astrological thoughts for the day. Here we are in early March of 2023, and I just thought it would be an interesting discussion and a, maybe even a series of talks about the housing system and the Dharma houses. There's three. There's the first house, which represents your personal Dharma. There's the fifth house, which, re which represents your creative Dharma. And then there's the ninth house, which represents your spiritual Dharma. And those three houses, it, when recommending gemstones, an astrologer will go by a, a rule book usually that they will not recommend a gemstone for any other than the Dharma houses. So the first Lord, the fifth Lord, and the ninth lord and what is a lord it's a planet it's the it's the body of light that constructed that area of the zodiac so so what is the lord of leo leo is ruled by or the lord of leo is the sun and i'm looking here at paramahansa yogananda's chart a great avatar and world teacher and he has the leo rising with the moon rising so he was born at moonrise which will make you a double of whatever ascendant you are. If, if you're born with the moon rising in Gemini, you're a double Gemini because your ascendant and your moon is there. So in Yogananda's chart, we have a double Leo. That's very powerful, solar, and it's a king. It's a, it's a royalty. And the section of the zodiac where Yogananda's moon is, is called Magha. It's a it correlates to a royal renunciate. That's one of the meanings of that area of the zodiac. But Yogananda's first lord, this will be the Dharma house. Uh, the, the lord of your ascendant will be your Dharma, wherever is that lord. So wh where is Yogananda's son? Because the son is the lord of the first house. It represents his personal Dharma. And the sun is in Sagittarius in the chart of Yogananda, which is the fifth house from Leo. So we see the fifth house is creative Dharma. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. So Yogananda was born to be a creative person, a creative channel. The fifth house is counseling. It's, it's what you envision with your higher mind and what you manifest here as an instrument for the divine. And that would be, uh, in the most common sense, what is the, it that people create? Children. Children are the most instinctually creatable dharma. Because you feel it in here, you want to, the sexual experience, and you end up having that and you, you create children. That's the easiest way to develop creative dharma, and it's the most common. It's what everybody's doing here in creation. And if you're not, if you don't have children, what is your creative dharma? You should be creative more, more so, if you don't have children. Because children force on the parents a creative uh, dharma. That We have to give counsel to the children. We have to correct the children. We have to guide the children. This is a creative project, and it lasts not even just 18 years. I'm 40 years old and my mom is still working on me. <laughs> She's still here in the world and, and when I see her, she gives me gems of wisdom, inspirational advice and love, unconditional. So let, jumping back to Yogananda's chart, he has the sun in the fifth house and this is a creator, a creative visionary. And Yogananda was a creator. He was an inventor, in fact. He created, uh, he invented the top of the toilet seat that closes and seal makes the, the hole invisible, invisible. <laughs> yeah, Yogananda came up with the idea of the house car or the, the motor home. Yogananda created a recipe before the term guacamole was coined. And he, he sent a recipe to his loved ones back at Mount Washington with a recipe he learned in Mexico, or he, that he came up with, apparently. So there's these stories of Yogananda being a creator. It's pretty cool. 
So then the fifth house, that's creative dharma. And in order to gauge one's what is my creative dharma, you'll want to look at not just the how, the planets in that house. And some people will look at their fifth house and they'll see, oh, I don't have planets there. I'm not a creative person. But that's not how it works. It's where is the ruler of that fifth house? So I'll give you an example. Where is Jupiter in Paramahansa Yogananda's chart? It will tell you something about the nature of his creative dharma, the fifth lord. Where has it gone? This is going to tell us something about Yogananda's creative dharma. And the fifth lord is Jupiter. And Jupiter in Yogananda's chart is in Pisces in the eighth house of death, rebirth, and transformation. It's a house of enlightenment. It's a house that makes a, the shamanic approach to the spiritual life. It is the uh, shakti-oriented approach of transformation, of inner life force, transmutation, and the resultant change in awareness. The Eighth House is an amazing place for transformation of consciousness. And that is where Yogananda's intention would be, where, where is his creative dharma connected to? It's the transformation of others and the, the tackling of the huge problem of death and the uh, awareness that rebirth and transformation are the inevitable followings of the death process. And here in life, we go through many deaths. The eighth house doesn't represent just our physical death, but those times in which we've really let go and trusted God to, to help us through a difficult cycle. And thus we were reborn into a new, a kind of palpable, tangible faith through that experience. And that's the, the transformation part. This is where God works through us, where we see a challenge or something we don't want to face ahead. And we say, I can't do this, but you created this. You know the way through it. Show me the way through this karma. That's the eighth house transformation is when Divine Mother shows you the way through. Not around, not a way to hide from it, but through your karma. So you receive the great blessing that these planets have instigated upon you, have, have actually triggered for you so you can grow. The, the planets are deities. They're not even planets. They're bodies of light and they're aware and they play roles in the evolution of humanity, which means they help us work out our karma. Because the only thing between you and your highest self your highest evolution is your karma. In other words, the only thing that makes you feel separate from unity with God is that those karmic lessons that we haven't yet learned. So the eighth house is very special in preparing us for the ninth house, which is spiritual dharma. So here in Western culture, we're a very eighth house culture. We do things until we puke. We do things until we're sick of them. We we um, oversatiate and, and uh, get into overindulgence to the point where we make ourselves ill. This is the death part of the eighth house, the overindulgence. And many, many people come to the spiritual life, especially in the West, through some kind of deep suffering or through, through some kind of addiction they've battled or, or some other kind of eighth house styled trauma that wakes them up to their need for real divine wisdom in their life. And the ninth house, the last Dharma, where Yogananda, his Mars is the ruler of his ninth house. Aries is the ninth house in Yogananda's chart. And Mars is also in that eighth house. So what does Yogananda have for his spiritual Dharma? It's to, ch it's to change people, it's to change the world, it's to change consciousness. This is Pisces, where he has Jupiter and Mars. Pisces is a, a visionary sign. It wants to bring uh, the higher realm here into this realm. And, and Jupiter and Mars together are like Moses. This is like a powerful prophet. Uh, Swami Kriyananda also had Jupiter and Mars together in his horoscope. It makes for a Mars passion, warrior, driven. And then Jupiter, truth, Dharma, what is right? You compare, you, you combine those two and you have a powerful uh, 
you have a powerful channel to do God's work. And Jupiter Mars can also lose itself to its passion and, and forget the values. It can forget the morals. So Jupiter Mars is an affliction of sorts, but when they've worked together upward, it becomes like a powerful speaker or somebody who can move mountains with their word or with their mind. And that was the incarnation of Paramhansa Yogananda. And he did have a world-changing mission to bring. And it's fun to look into his chart. Today I just looked at the Dharma houses. But next time we may look at the Artha houses. Or perhaps the Moksha houses. But in the next video I'll focus on a, a different set of houses. And I hope you enjoyed today's discussion about the Dharma houses. And using Yogananda's chart as a case study. God bless you and thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.